to weave a little dog on the Thumbelina and Wiz looms. You'll start by weaving a two inch square on the Thumbelina Wiz, uh, not on the Thumbelina Wiz, on the Wiz, uh, which is a Dewberry Ridge loom. That, that's their version of the Weave It, the traditional Weave It loom, and it's just, it's just lovely to work with. And so you make the square, now that's going to be for the head, and use the Thumbelina loom for the body to make the arch shape that uh, the instructions ex are explained fully in when you buy the loom. So, head and body. You're going to make three little oval. Well, they're kind of elongated ovals, they're not strips. Okay, one for a tail, one for the ears, and I'll show you how, how to make the third one for the legs. So ears, front legs, and tail are done on, very simply, let's make a slip knot, pull it out, Place it on the loom, wrap the loom once, twice, three times. Twice is usually enough, but I would much rather have a little bit extra yarn than not enough, and so I always take it one and a half, you know, just that little extra bit. Okay, I'm going to move all this out of the way, just so that it's um, not cluttering up the field of view. So to weave the the narrow strip, you just simply go basically under over from the lower nail up to the upper nail. The legs are made from a single strip that is folded in half. The front legs are. Because this little dog is going to be, the one that I'm making right now, is going to be a flat motif that I'm applicating to the garden shawl, it doesn't, I'm not doing two hind legs. The dog is, um, as you saw in the uh, opening photograph, the dog is a sitting dog. And so you don't really need to see the second um, hind leg. And deciding with the strip that the tail is being made from, I can you see how I wove the strand? Of course, the, the weaving strand ends up at the top part, but I wove it back down to the lower edge so that I can stitch it on without having the upper edge um, being having the uh, tail end of yarn hanging from it. For the ears and the legs they are stitched to the dog at the midpoint and so I will take both yarn ends into the outside channels of the weaving and then I will take them to the midpoint of the weaving so that you can use the yarn from the weaving as the uh, yarn for stitching it in place and the tips of the weaving at both ends are clean finished. To finish the weaving at the top, I'm just going to push this down a little bit more, weave a few more rows in. At the top, we'll do a half hitch knot to clean finish that end and tie it off so that it's locked before I take it back through into the weaving. We are having a very stormy summer and it looks like the skies are about to open and thunder is about to hit again. We keep having 
enormous thunder showers here. We had the driest spring on record and then have had way above average rainfall since then in the summer. So I'm lifting this off the loom. I'm going to take the needle. It's, whoops, sorry, going around and through the loop. I'm going to weave down to the midpoint with the weaving strand. I'm going to thread the tail end in and take it up the other side. And now this one is ready to be used either as the legs or the puppy's ears. I need to make sure, yep, I actually the end on this one was so short that it just vanished in the weaving and that's okay, I can use other yarn ends to weave it. Next, I'll weave the dog's hind leg using the Dumbelina loom. To weave the hind leg, make a slip knot, play and extend it, place it between the edge nails, the two outside edge nails. Now take the end around the, not the end, the yarn from the ball, the tail end will just lie there, and go around the second nail to the left, bring it down, around, bring it around the upper one and down, and then tie it off at the lower edge. So we're going to make a petal shape for the dog's hind leg, and so wrap this once, twice, three times. There we go. And the leg will fan out from the hip, which is at the lower edge here, down to a point at the foot. And then the foot will be, um, I'll wrap at the ankle and then stitch around. If you go and look at the gnome and the chubby fairy, the, the dog's hind leg is done just like the arm for the fairy or the gnome. So it's the same process of weaving the full width at the from the hip to about the knee and then petaling down you you will be shaping the leg as you weave you go over under one for about an inch and then and use your fingers to hold the weaving out and then over under two and then wrapping and then stitching through the loops to make the foot. So that is the process. When I discovered the weaving the paddle shapes. Oh my goodness, that opened a whole world of design possibilities for me. And so now when I'm doing my sketching for each new design, I look at how I can break down the elements of the drawing into shapes that are easily woven on the Bambolina. I find the Wizloom works 
really well for doing the I basically start a lot of the heads as yo-yo circles and using the whiz the two inch whiz loom for that works really well so now I have switched to over two under two and I'm going to start radically pulling in for the lower section of the leg and we'll give the puppy a fairly substantial foot just because we can it's one of our dogs is part she's a shorty so she's part shih tzu and part yorkie and she has stumpy little legs with quite large feet so this dog is in on this this little dog that I'm weaving is kind of in honor of her so now I'm going to take the yarn through those end loops to make her foot I suppose your dog might be a he, depending on what you're making. And now the yarn goes back and is woven into the leg, the channel up the side, and to shape the leg You're going to pull that yarn that you just took through and there you go. You have now got a shaped hind leg. So we're going to, the dog can face in either direction depending on what you prefer. The tail will be stitched at the upper round part of the body and the leg will be stitched here. We will turn up a little bit under. Let me just begin with the head though. Take the yarn end through. I've left extra yarn at the end of the weaving of the two inch square and I am running around the outside perimeter of the square because I'm going to pull it up into a yo-yo shape. At the corner I just go through one of the loops. Uh, the rest of the way around I do go through all the all of the other the edge loops. Okay, so now when I'm pulling this into shape I'm going to hold, I will pinch and pull up, but I'm going to hold. What I want to do is hold out the a point to become the dog's snout. So I've sort of pinched on that and I want to have that nice cut line across the top that does say puppy dog. Okay, so I have that cut line now. I'm going to push that out of the way. I'm going to stitch to shape the muzzle of the dog and now I've lost that nice cut line a little bit so I'm going to weave back up to that point where the face turns to snout. There we go and pull on that to tighten it 
and I think I will take this back through. I just came up and made a very tiny stitch on the front of the face and I'm going to bring the nose back just a bit so you're you're sculpting quite carefully there I am I'm pleased with that that will do okay excellent so now I will stitch the puppy's head and again I'm going to just fold down a couple of rows at the top and fold up a couple of rows at the lower edge. I will use this yarn end to stitch the dog's neck in place. Now I could have woven a paddle shape but I wanted to have a I chose to weave the um, the shape on the Thumbelina uh, as the full arch for the body. It's just a personal preference. You can experiment with how you want to do your shaping. And there's the dog's body. And You know what I think I'm going to do is I think I will stitch the eye on first before I stitch the head to the body. I have a black bead and black needle and thread and I will stitch the dog's eye. Here's the needle and thread going through with the bead. and I'm going to stitch the eye in place before I stitch the head to the body. Whoops. Pulled it right out of the uh, out of the line of fire here, and I'm going to use the needle and thread that I am stitching the eye to the head. So there's the eye in place, and I'll use that needle and thread to create the nose. I have to untangle. So I'm going to stitch some vertical stitches in place at the nose and they are slightly fanned out. Again, this is a flat motif so the head is really two-dimensional. Makes great applique. You can applique them onto blankets, pillows. Oh, this thread is really quite cranky. It's snicking and snagging nastily. Okay. Oh, come on. It's being really objectionable. Well, fooey on you then. I'm going to just take that to the back and because it's going to be all stitched on to the to the um, garden shawl, that extra snarky bit of, of thread won't show up. So there's the nose. Still, it's a bit gappy. I'm going to just take a few more stitches and Okay, that's looking a bit better. Then I will just do a little line for the mouth. Now technically it should have a line going up from the mouth to the nose. But because the dog will be applied to the um, to the shawl, it's not going to show. So I'm not going to worry about that. Now I'm going to go to the back and stitch that in place and catch that 
annoying, nasty little loop. Humph. Okay, and now we'll put the ears on. Okay, and I will put the ears on and stitch them in place. This, this is a droopy-eared dog. Droopy little darling. Stitching through the folded ear section. My goodness, that bit of yarn is really short and use the other bit of yarn to just pull that loop into line and take it in behind as well. There we go, so our dog's head is complete. So depending on how you want to do the coloring for the dog, you can use um, other pieces of fleece or yarn and felt them on to make spots and dots and this, that and the other. I'm just tying this end in. It's a little bit short and a little bit clumsy. I could have certainly used a bit more, a bit more uh, yarn there. So there's the dog's head is done. And now stitch the head to the body. It's a chubby dog. If this was an accurate portrait of either of our little dogs, I would have to do coloring variations, but it isn't, so we'll just go with the plain white. And the head is now stitched on, and we'll anchor and secure by just taking a few stitches in through the back to lock the stitching in place. And now, where's the tail? Here's the tail. We want to curve the tail, so pull on the yarn end and that curves the dog's tail in, and that gets sewn to the puppy's backside along the top. I'm not going to cut the extra ends off because I can use them to stitch the puppy to the shawl using the extra yarn ends. There's the happy little tail. The short end is neither use nor ornament, so it'll get woven in. Because I don't need it perking around and this can be snipped because they're not useful either. Now for the puppies. Rear end. So we want his rear end to be 
with the, the back leg. So we want him to sort of be sitting up. So his head comes up a little bit and then his front paws will be stitched at the front here. So we use the yarn end here. You know, these are really short. I think I'll weave them in and use the longer yarn end that are uh, that is still on the, the little dog and because the short ends are really too short to be terribly useful. Snip that off. And pull this up a bit more. It got straightened. I just want to make sure that he's going to sit properly so he can... There. So I'm going to just get that organized where I want his... how I want his legs aligned. I guess he could also be lying down with his legs in front. There. That looks right. Okay, so I'll just bring this yarn and in and bring it down and stitch the legs to the body. I'm going to take the yarn I guess what I'll do, because he is going to be applique on, I should probably stitch the leg along the length of the body so that it's not jumping up off the shawl. This is on the going on the garden shawl, and you'll see when I post the video of the finished garden shawl how all the little animals and fairies and gnomes are all stitched in place onto the garden shawl. And oh mercy, the number of hours that I have put into this shawl. It's pretty intense. Okay, and his front legs will be stretched out. So I will weave this in along the big gappy stitches that I'm taking are being hidden uh, in the in the back of the of the body and the front legs are now. stitched in place. And it is thundering. The other day when I was um, filming the... which one was it? I guess it was the gnomes. Although actually the last few weeks as I have been filming all of these, there's been a storm every single day. It's been quite the act of summer. Okay, so his... there he is. The Thumbelina Loom puppy. And when I'm uh, stitching him on, I will stitch his legs out in front. So there we have it. The Thumbelina puppy the garden shawl and happy weaving and happy
Happy everything. Happy puppies, if that's your joy. Whatever your joy is, I wish you the best in it. And there's our little friend. Just ready to make a little bit of puppy mischief. Happy weaving. <laughs>